What's up, everybody? I'm back again, but this time, instead of on Sunday, I'm here on Wednesday. It's different, but it's still great. Guys, I got somebody I'm very excited to talk with today. Uh, I got Dane from the uh, DeFi Crypto Alliance. Uh, the, the the guys, you know, over here for we're using crypto as what? It, how do they say it? Crypto as wealth generation and real estate as wealth preservation. And so uh, I'm excited to talk to Dan. I've had Corey on this channel, I think like twice already. And uh, finally it worked out where I could bring Dan on. And I've enjoyed these two um, since they started posting uh, streams on YouTube like a couple months ago. Um, and I think they've been a huge asset to this community so far. Uh, I've learned a lot from them and I'm excited to continue to, you know, uh, both work with them on streams and stuff, but also learn about what they uh, what they know in terms of crypto, but also really in real estate as well. Um, this title and thumbnail is not clickbait. It was clickbait at first, okay? But Dane has told me he has ways actually to give us free real estate. So guys, stick around because I'm sticking around for that at the very least. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Money Talk Dane. How's it going, buddy? What's up, guys? This will uh, this will be fun today. I'm uh, I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> To chat, share you the uh, the secrets of real estate. Uh, we can get into some crypto stuff too. In fact, yeah. Corey and I were reviewing. I think that it was November of last year that we started streaming. So it's almost been a year, which is uh, wow. It was pretty wild. I texted Corey and I was like, "Hey, we should uh, we should just start streaming and see what happens." And uh, and we found, you know, we found that Corey and I, neither one of us. I consider it both of us relatively intelligent, but we know for a fact that there are always people that know more than what we do. And uh, and so we've used it as a really cool way just to get a little bit more known in the community and, and create some really cool relationships with people like you to be able to learn the things that we don't and network and have different opportunities. So, uh, so I'm grateful to be here, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be uh, fun. I think it'll be good. You know, I am. Um... I've come on your guys' show a couple times already for like your your Friday night stuff, and then I think you've had me on at least once just to come up and invite me on. I think impromptu, uh, but I've always enjoyed the conversations we have. I think me, you, and Corey we're all kind of on like a similar wavelength in terms of like what we like in crypto, what we find interesting, and like especially when it comes to like the passive income generating stuff. Like I think that gets all three of us fired up, and so that's why you know I want to have you on, man, because I think I think we can just have a good. I, I think we can fill an hour pretty well, you know. <laughs> absolutely let's do it yeah let's do it but i, I want to get to the free real estate stuff but i'm gonna save that till the end because that's the that's the juicy stuff i think the the cherry on top to this to this good stream but first i want to just kind of start with like where we're at in pulse chain right now man like like we've actually been pumping for once <laughs> for once for once in the past two years we're actually making money which is crazy how have you been feeling these past this past like week Oh man, it feels awesome. It's nice to, for me, I'm kind of, this is like affirmation that we're in the right place. You know, we felt like we've been in the right place since we found Richard Hart, you know, a number of years mm -hmm. ago. And uh, I think, you know, probably just about everybody else here has had that same feeling where you found Richard and you had at, at least at some point an aha moment where, you know, you, you felt, felt like you actually found something substantial in crypto and uh it's nice to have those it's nice to have those inclinations like uh like signs that you're that you're in the right place and i think the charts pumping right now we're seeing life in the ecosystem and our mm -hmm. stuff you know stuff that we that we like largely for the most part has outshone almost everything in crypto over the last week or so which is uh yep. which is really exciting now i want to i want to be careful when when i start feeling Real happy because usually that means things are getting toppy and it might be some time to take some chips off the table. Uh, but yeah, I feel great. I, I feel really good. Yeah, I, I always feel I start to feel kind of sad when I feel too happy now because I'm like, God, God damn it. I know I should sell something right now. I know I need to take something <laughs> off the table, but I don't want to do it. Like, like uh, I'm definitely a vic victim of like marrying my bags too much where like, it, and it, it's kind of derived from like the aquatic animals thing that like I talk about a lot. Right. And I know like you and Corey like a lot where it's like you shoot for this position that you want a lot. Like you want that squid, you want that dolphin. But like then when you sell, like you don't have it anymore. And so it's like it's, it's great for psychologically getting you to like make the purchases that you're supposed to. But it actually kind of works against you in a lot of ways when it's time to sell the positions because you're like, man, I don't want to be a squid anymore. I've been a dolphin this whole time. Sure. And I know that about myself. So like, for instance, if. You know, if I have a target, there's been a number of protocols that have launched on Pulse Chain that I'm excited about. 
that, uh, you know, for everybody's in a different financial situation. For me, it was a very achievable in, in a lot of these places to go and get a shark position. Um, so Corey and I kind of have this, uh, you know, this, this understanding if there's things that we like that we believe in, we try to be sharks in everything. Um, and so I know for me that, uh, that there's going to be times to like take to de-risk. Uh, my opinion, I de-risked a little bit today out of some of my stuff. And, and so I'll go a little bit more. If I want to be a shark, we'll be a, I'll be a shark plus some. So when I feel like, you know, there's a yeah. time to risk, I can keep my shark, if you will, and take a little bit of chips off the table. And gosh, I mean, we've ran so hard for, I think it's almost been a week that, you know, like nothing just goes straight up. And so maybe I'm wrong, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Maybe it's the time to de-risk. But uh, but I feel pretty comfy with that as far as my own holdings are concerned. You make your own financial decisions. And so that's something that, uh, you know, that I've taken into account for my own strategy and how I build my own bags. 100%. And I have the I have this article I wrote on my uh, website. It's like the NFT rule of three, where it's like you buy three. Oh, NFTs. I love that. that was yeah, great. it's great. Yeah. Buy three NFTs, one to recoup your initial, one to take profits on, and one to basically hodl forever so you never miss out. And I'm realizing over time, like, oh, I just do that with the aquatic animals. Like if I want to be a shark, get three shark positions. Um, right. We're going to be a dolphin, get three dolphin positions. And that way, at least you like you're doing the right the things you're supposed to be doing, even though like sometimes it hurts to do it. Um, the only problem is you have to have three times the money to be able to get. Those yeah, that's why I'm saying like three shark yeah. positions and some of this is like a lot. It could be a lot. Yeah. Which yeah. one? Maybe it's like two. And then you do like, you know, half of it for profit taking half of it for like de-risking stuff like that. But basically, you just need a little bit extra so that psychologically you can um, you can do the right thing. And I think. In the crypto game, that's like so important, managing your money, not just from like an objective standpoint, but like also realizing that you have emotions, your psychology plays a role. And so the way you position yourself, like there are strategies that you can use to make sure that you're mentally okay with doing the right thing. So you're not like, even if you do the right thing, it kind of sucks to be like, damn it, like I wish I had some more coins or like the chances of you basically doing something wrong if you're a mental anguish or like cognitive distance or whatever goes up. Um, right. And so that's one thing I've been exploring a lot in my own head. Like, how can I position my portfolio so that my head is in the right place to make more right moves than bad moves, you know? Right. Well, and, and I, yeah, and I think that there's, there's so much to like, I come, I keep coming back to this, this concept of knowing, like I'm trying to remember, I think it's, I think it's the uh, concept in the book, uh, as a man thinketh, if you guys know in the chat, um, tell me if I'm right or not, and cor correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's in there where it talks about this concept called know thyself. Mm -hmm. And uh, and everybody thinks, especially as an investor, everybody thinks that they they understand their risk tolerance and they understand their goals. And uh, and frankly, you probably don't. And mm -hmm. you won't until you get kicked in the nuts a bunch of times. And you say, oh, geez, like, uh, this, is, this is different than what I thought it was going to be like. And you make adjustments. Uh, point in case in real estate, I have a friend that uh, that I introduced to some other guys that I met at a mastermind um, that were buying that were buying real estate deals in the Midwest. You can get deals in the Midwest for like almost free. We were buying properties for like fifty grand, fifty to sixty grand a property, and that thing will rent for like a thousand a thousand dollars a month. Like that's stupid. Wow. Those numbers in real estate terms are really good. And, uh, and, and the deal was, is, you know, they would, they would find the deals and they would manage them and do the construction and we'd be the money in the deals. And, uh, and so I, I mentioned this to one of my other friends that I was going to do this. And I told him, I said, look, I'm only, only, I know all of this is relative, uh, but we found a portfolio of 16 doors. I said, I'm going to buy just this one portfolio. And, and I want to see it work, like from beginning to end. I want to buy it. I want to see them perform on fixing it up. I want to see them perform on managing it. I want to see the cash flow come in. I want to see end to end before I buy anything else out there. Like I want them mm -hmm. to prove that they can actually do this. And for my risk tolerance and the money that I had at the time, like that portfolio made sense for me. And, uh, and so I said, hey, look, like I would recommend that if you were going to do this, that you do the same. Be conservative. There's always more money to be, to be made. But like, be smart about this. And he did exactly the opposite of what I suggested. In a matter of like eight months, he had 50 units. And uh, and it's in that relationship with those guys, I introduced him to a souring. It's not working out as anticipated. And, he, and it, frankly, it's left him in a very difficult financial position because he over leveraged. 
And, uh, and he hasn't, you know, like he hasn't been kicked in the nuts enough to be mm -hmm. able to say, Hey, like, uh, there's a, you know, there's a right way to do this where you manage your risk properly for you. And, uh, and so, you know, you just go in for me, I go in with the understanding. I know I'm not exit going to execute perfectly. I know I'm not. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, and I like, I like finding opportunities with outsized returns. I'm probably not going to be the guy that's just going to buy a bunch of stuff and stake it forever and sit on my hand. Like I'm just not going to be the guy. And so I need to develop a strategy for me where it keeps me entertained and engaged, but also I can be smart and wise about how I do that. And so for the most part, you know, like most of my stuff, I'm just going to hold, but I have a little bit of my portfolio that, like I said, I can, I can go risk off and risk on a little bit when I feel like there's opportunities to do that and, uh, mm -hmm. and, and see if I'm right. And if I'm wrong, that's fine. Because like I said, most of my holdings, I'm just set, setting in largely for getting, but you learn to play the game in such a way that it's engaging for you where you need to be engaged enough that, you know, you're excited, but you also don't want to bet so much. You can't sleep at night. That's kind of like a good balancing mm -hmm. act mm -hmm. that I use for myself. Yeah. Have you found a lot of those lessons you've learned in the real estate to translate pretty well over into crypto or has it been like completely 100%. new skill set or no? no yeah, I mean, I mean, there it's the same game. I mean, all this yeah. stuff, in, in my opinion, it's generally the same games uh, you learn pretty quickly. And this is an un unfortunate truth, but you learn pretty quickly that when money gets involved, most people are not your friend. They're just not. Mm -hmm. And they're going to make decisions they would never make uh, if there wasn't money involved. And uh, and it's and it's human nature. And so if you go in, if you come in with that understanding and uh, and you understand that you've got to be the one to think, you've got to be the one to make the decisions and you've got to be the one to learn how to play the game, well, then you, te you can you can learn to win. Yeah. Um, you know, like there was a are you, I'm sure your part. Do you follow that coin fashions account on Twitter? <laughs> Yeah. So that's a great, I, I really, I frankly, like that's one of my favorite accounts to follow. Cause I feel like I've learned a lot from some of the stories, mm -hmm. whether they be accurate or not being posted on there. And the one more recently where the person said that they thought they'd made so much money in hex that they quit their job at the pulse chain sack. And now they've like capitulated. And I, you know, I, I think that's a, a really interesting story. One, it's really sad. I hope that person, you know, yeah. they can, they can figure out whatever they need to figure out. And, you know, in our opinion, we're here, here in crypto. We hope they can get back into the game. Uh, but crypto is not for everybody. So, like, you know, you, you've got you've got to go and figure out how to manage your life and however you see fit. Uh, but, gosh, like, it blows my mind that you could taste that. You could taste that run and mm -hmm. make enough money where you felt like you were done forever type of thing. And yep. then experience some downside and you're like, oh, the downside was so bad. I'm never going to do this again. You know, like I, I just there's so many ways to make money out there. There's not a way that's as easy as crypto. Literally, mm -hmm. all you have to do is park money at relatively good times, take profits at relatively decent times and manage your emotions. Like you should be able to learn to manage your emotions as a life skill, period, to be a good mm -hmm. human being. And I think crypto just accelerates your need to be able to learn to do that. And so, gosh, if you can if you can learn to manage your emotions, you know, you can understand that you're the one that needs to learn to play the game and take take full accountability for that. There's another book uh, called Extreme Ownership by Jocko Wilnick. If you haven't read it, mm -hmm. everyone here should read it. Um, and he talks about, you know, how you're the one that can take back power in your own life when you take accountability for everything. And even when somebody shortchanged you, even when you were treated wrongly by somebody else, if you're the one that can own all of your life experiences, well, it puts the power in your in your control and you're the leader of your life. You're the master of your life. You can go make your decision, decisions and create a life uh, that many can only dream of. So that's yeah. what uh, that's what we're after. Yeah. No, I also, I, I like the, that I haven't read the book, but I've listened to a lot of Jocko stuff. So I understand like the general principles of it, of, of that concept. And even if like, if it's not technically true, like even if you're not actually responsible or you don't have ownership over something pragmatically, it's a useful mindset to take where it's like, uh, no matter if something happened that like you, that wasn't favorable or you wish you didn't wish you went a different way. If, if, if you don't have responsibility over it or you don't have control over it, then there's nothing to be done. It's just something bad that happened that can't be done. But if you can find ways in which that you actually had effect on the way that outcome occurred, then you are able to actually affect 
and improve things in the future. But if you don't have that mindset, then it's going to be, oh, it's just, you know, it's just what happens is this person's fault, that person's fault. Uh, but if you're able to take, you know, accountability in any way, shape, shape, and for any way, shape, or form, then at least you've like gained that power back and are able to improve things in the next iteration, which is a huge thing in crypto because a lot of people, you know, um, they, they blame, say, influencers, um, you know, shows, whatever it is for pumping a certain coin, talking big about something like this thing is going to the moon. We can even talk about Hex going to $100, Hex going to $7, like other people getting really excited about stuff in crypto, talking about their excitement, because that's what you do when you're excitement, other people getting amped up about it, and then they going and buying, and then it goes down and like, oh, how dare you, you know, lie, you lied to yeah. me, you know, and when it, when in reality, at, 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 and this is like the, the, the truth you have to realize when you're investing in crypto, is that, um, you know, you're, you click the buy and sell button. Like, like no one is forcing you to put your money into a MetaMask and go to Uniswap and buy something or sell something. Like you're doing that on your own, even if somebody, it was somebody else's word or somebody else's excitement that got you to do it. You have to understand that like you took the information given to you by somebody else, either at face value or did a little bit of research, but you ultimately decided to press the buy or sell button. And that's yeah. like a, a big principle. I think that, um, a big step forward you have to make when you start investing in crypto overall, or at least if you want to be successful in crypto. Well, and, and, and in investing in general, I think one of the things I love about investing is like, it's really easy to tell if you're good at playing in the game or if you suck at it, it's really easy yep. because you're either making money or you're losing <laughs> you're period. end of the day. And so, you know, like it's, you know, it's once again, it's up to you. In fact, in that, in the book and, and once again, I'm, I'm, not that I hold this opinion, but it's a it's an interesting thought process. Where in that book, extreme ownership, he even goes so far as to say, you know, like somebody that's experienced rape, that if they take ownership, now they're not saying it was their fault, you know, but if they take ownership for saying, hey, like this is part of my life, and I'm not willing to give to give that person that took power over me, I'm not willing to give them control of my life anymore. I own this experience in my life, and uh, and I'm gonna. I'm going to, I'm going to use it to, to move forward. I'm going to let it empower and fuel me, you know? And I thought that was, that was pretty bold. Um, and so, you know, it's the same thing with your investments. You're either learning to win or you're, or you're learning behaviors to lose. And like another point in case. So like somebody in our community that some people hate, some people love, I tend to like the guy we've had really mm -hmm. good experiences. Um, B roots, you know, he's like the meme coin king of pulse chain. And, uh, and, and you've got to make a determination if that's a game that you want to play. So like, you know, he goes on Twitter and he talks about all this money that he's made. And, uh, and I'm like, oh, you know, I like making money too. Uh, let's see if this is a game that, you know, that interests me. So I go through and I learn to play the game, right? So I watch B-Roots. I watch him on his show, Shill Tank. I see the stuff that he's posting and I'll go look up the price chart and I'll see, okay, where was it at when he posted and what did it look like? And then what did it do after he shared that on Twitter? And is that like a repeatable thing that you can benefit from? Or is it, or is it, you know, something that, that might lead to more losses than gains? Once again, can you play the game well? Do you have an edge? And, uh, and I found that from looking at that stuff, I think there's money to be made there. Um, I just mm -hmm. think it's, I think, I think there's a lot of dedication and time that needs to go into and a lot of attention that needs to be yep. paid. And it's not attention I'm willing to pay right now with uh, with how my schedule is. And mm -hmm. so, you know, you just have to determine what games you're willing to play. Yeah. The meme coin game is a really interesting one, because if you just take aside, like, you know, what are what are sound investments, what's a good investment? If you just took that all to the side, you can make money with memes. Like some of the most successful coins, the most successful people in crypto have been the ones that hit the big memes over time. But right. also with that overperforming of success comes like the inc way increased probability of losing, right? Because like, you know, you just go on to any, any, um, it, what's the word? Like Dex, Dex screener and you see all the new pairs that are popping up that are getting volume, like eight out of 10 of them are going to be honey pots or just straight rugs. And like, I'm, I know you and Corey watch, uh, so me and he talks all the time like they're just rugging for like two thousand dollars like it's not even like a crazy amount of money they're just throwing it out there some money gets in and they're like cool i made some money i'm getting out repeat wa wash rinse and repeat so it's like this like you know you can win just absolutely crazy like like the, the big ones are like doge shiba um like those are like the flagship meme coin wins and then like you can also just lose your money but it takes so much attention when the pepe thing was going on i had 
friends who were like trying to hit multiple meme coins and they were like literally watching like deck screener or like uniswap watching for a new pair to come up and just aping immediately and like that's what you have to do because you don't know which one is going to win it's like the vc investor mindset or like the lotto ticket mindset where it's like you just buy a little bit 50 bucks of everything and if one of them does the, the 500x well then you've made all of your money back plus some Right. It's a hard game. It's a hard game to play. Um, and I found the same thing. It's just, it wasn't worth my time to try to like invest in all, like trying to find the right telegram groups or find like the right source of information or just like keep throwing bets out there. Cause you know, you just keep losing until you win and you may never actually win. <laughs> like you have to be at the, you have to be playing the game at the right time when something actually takes off, which could, you never know when that's going to happen. Yeah. And we found that we, we developed and credit to Corey, like, he really headed up. We developed a strategy where, you know, we were winning a lot more than we were losing in memes who were making money. But, you know, mm -hmm. like these guys come and post on Twitter and they're like, oh, the meme coiners are the ones making all the money on Pulse Chain. But in these charts, you know, they look like they're flying. But if you're early, like the most you could put in is like 50 bucks mm -hmm. with, but yeah. without like incurring 30% slippage. And so, you know, like that's where, once again, it comes to learning the game. So you have to see... Yeah. You know, like, so, so we spent the time. We said, hey, is there a way to repeatably make money here? Uh, we found that liquidity is crap. You can't bet anything meaningful early on. Um, you have to spend a lot of time and attention. And uh, and you're hoping that, yeah, that you can win a lot more than you lose. And it just wasn't, the bang wasn't worth the buck for us and the time and attention mm -hmm. used. And uh, in fact, there's another book. I think I have it here somewhere. It's called The, the Dip by Seth Godin. Oh, it's right here. Yeah. I'll grab it. So it's this little tiny book. It's called The Dip by Seth Godin. It's literally like a hundred pager. Um, it's a great book. And uh, and the concept of this book, you can see it here on the, it goes, you know, just like crypto, there's a dip here before the run. And the idea is, is with any venture, this is an entrepreneurial book, with any venture, and crypto fits into this too, is you've got to determine, and you're hoping you, tr you try to determine as fast as humanly possible, what this dip experience is like so that mm -hmm. you can determine if you're willing to go through it. So for instance, you know, that's what we did with the meme coin thing, for instance, like we're standing over here and we're trying to determine, Hey, what's the pain you have to go through before you can get up over here and make some money and determine, mm -hmm. Hey, is it worth going through the dip portion here to get to the profits? And, uh, and our research indicated that, you know, for the most part for us and for what, what we like to do, the answer was no. And I, and I love this book because I apply this to everything when it's a money making venture or a relationship building, you know, like, are you willing to go through the initial pain to get mm -hmm. to the fruits? Um, and if the answer is no, then just skip the thing. It's not worth your time and attention. Um, and if the answer is yes, then like you spend the time, you spend the money and you spend, you know, whatever it needs to be. And you go through the pain to get to the profits. And that's I think that's such an important life lesson for anything that you do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, man. Now, let me, this is another question I want to ask you, or um, just uh, your, your opinion on this. So you say on your show a lot, um, you know, you think we're in the right place at the right time and like in the right ecosystem. Why, why do you think like the RH ecosystem pulse chain stuff is like the right place to be in crypto right now amidst all the other opportunities that are out there? Yeah, I, that's a great question. So I found I found that in general, it, well, as an investor, you're looking for an edge, period, all of the time, right? If you're doing what everybody's doing, you don't have an edge, you're not going to make profits or, or make much of them. So you need an edge. I have made a lot of money over my career finding ways to work with people that are um, that are strong. I don't know if you've done like the coded, uh, color-coded personality matrix. There's mm -hmm. four colors, red, blue, yellow, and green. Um, the red people are the hard chargers. They tend to be entrepreneurs. They tend to, uh, and they tend to find success because it's kind of like, uh, Hey, my way or the highway type of thing, you either get in or you get out and mm -hmm. let's do this thing. And it's, and it's an interesting personality type because they push a lot of people away. Like Richard Hart point in case, a lot of people look at Richard and they say, you know, like F this guy, um, he's so flamboyant. He's so argumentative. He says outlandish things. He does outlandish things. Um, and so a lot of people, <coughs> they just keep it moving and don't pay attention. And I like opportunities like that because a lot of those those times, those people are onto something, but um, but personality-wise, they push a lot of people away. 
And, mm -hmm. uh, and that's a good indicator for me to be able to, once again, I want to learn to play the game. I want to see, hey, like, is this person on to something? Because there's an opportunity here. Because a lot of people are just going to miss it because of their personality, their delivery. It's not that great, frankly. Um, yeah. Some people want to argue with me about, you know, that with Richard. I think that Richard could do many things better with his delivery and his marketing mm -hmm. um, to really push the message forward. Uh, but once again, it's just personality characteristics and different traits. Uh, and, and that's mm -hmm. all part of the game. So um, I like betting on people that like that, that are on to something. Uh, we have five things in our buy box that we tend to, and we've done a lot of different things in cryptocurrency. So um, when you're an investor, if you're a professional investor, you tend to need to make, we call a buy box or a set of criteria for which you do deals, whether they be real estate mm -hmm. or crypto or buying and selling businesses or e-com, you know, we've done a lot of different things. You need a set of criteria and you build this set of criteria over time from experience. And once you have this set of criteria or this buy box, it tends to get pretty tight. And you mm -hmm. find that as long as you stay within this criteria, that well, you make money. And if you do it well, you make a lot of money if you stay within that criteria. So we're always refining this, but this is what we built for crypto. And I'll share you the five things. So the five things that we like, uh, we want to see a founder with a track record, somebody that is, uh, you know, if they've had success in crypto, that's great. But crypto hasn't been around all that long. I want to see something of some form of success in real life if they don't have it in crypto. You know, business building, marketing, education, mm -hmm. um, political poll, all of that type of stuff is useful. I wanted to be more than some guy in his grandma's basement hoping that he can perform some coding feed and make something cool. So mm -hmm. I want founder with a track record. We want a cult like community. Hex is a perfect example of that. Yeah. Um, I would argue that I would argue that Richard Hart has built the strongest community in all of crypto. And we've looked all over the place. I can't find one where the people are, are as cultish as um as thinking you know like richard hart is a mm -hmm. god to many people you know i don't necessarily think that but but those are things that are important components to a successful enterprise point in case apple uh, early mm -hmm. app guys they would tell you about apple products and how it was going to change the world and look what it's done it's changed the world and so those types of communities are really important uh, the third thing we want to see really strong marketing. We've learned this from business. If you're not marketing, you're dying. I think there's a lot of mm -hmm. things that hexagons could do infinitely better for marketing purposes to help onboard. But what what they are doing is remarkable. Like you know, like sending mail on your own dime or creating sponsorships, doing events. You know, something like the hex tour or the hex cruise. I don't think mm -hmm. those are necessarily onboarding opportunities, but I think they're cool things for community building for people that are already inside. I mean, show me another place that's doing that. I, I can't find mm -hmm. it. If you guys know, I'd like to know about it because I'd probably play some bets there. Um, fourth thing is I want to see strong uh, tokenomics, uh, which, you know, long story short, for me, when I say that, I just want to find things that have uh, that have done well in the past and those patterns mm -hmm. tend to repeat. We're already... In crypto, which is the tip of the spear as far as technology is concerned and industry, mm -hmm. we don't need to be at the tip of the tip of the spear, though. And we see time and time again, brand new ideas, they tend to fail. New businesses, new crypto ventures, brand new ideas that have never been done, they tend to fail and fail a lot. And so if mm -hmm. we can find cryptocurrencies that mirror things that worked in the past, well, that that's a good thing, I think. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then the, the fifth thing is we just want to see things that are built to pump and ideally produce passive income. And uh, it's not that hard to see almost since almost all code yeah. is just, you know, copy and paste it from previous things. It's remarkable how many people copy and paste code of things that went to zero or were scams. In fact, most of it. Um, so if you can find all five of those things in one cryptocurrency, uh, mm -hmm. gosh, you in my opinion, you found a unicorn. We haven't bought anything that's gone to zero or been a scam uh, as long as it met those five criteria. Now, of course, there's a volatility. Welcome to crypto. It's just part mm -hmm. of the game. Uh, but gosh, if you can, if you, if, if when we've stayed in that buy box, we tended to have good success and been in a good place. And like I said, I can't find many other places outside of Richard and some of the things being built on Pulse Chain that meet all five. There's some things, but not many. And so... Mm -hmm. That's why, frankly, that's why we're here.
No. Now, did you have those five before you got into crypto, before you got into the richer store? Or <laughs> no, is that, is that the a, product that, of, of the getting in? Yeah. That took a losing a lot of money. <laughs> So what what was it before you had the five things then? What what, what was it about? Was it Richard mostly specifically that got you uh, excited about uh, crypto, or was it say like Ethereum stuff, DeFi generally? Before you had like this this really, in my opinion, succinct and I think pretty all encompassing kind of heuristic on when what to invest in in crypto. I think that's a a great overview on like um, how people should evaluate fundamentally a certain project. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, we got into crypto like most people, right? Like everyone looks like a genius in the bull run. And so like I'm drinking the Kool-Aid from any pretty much anybody that had something remotely interesting to say, right? It, yeah. As far as crypto is concerned, it felt like you literally could have bought anything and look like a god. Um, and we and we found out pretty quickly when the bear market came, like who uh, the tide came out, who was wearing pants, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean... And the end of the day, I like to make money. In fact, it's funny. I was mm-hmm. talking with one of our entrepreneur buddies. I was like, what do you do besides business? And they're like, honestly, like, this is my hobby. And uh, I'm like, oh, I found my people, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. I love to do that. Like, it's just, for me, it's really, uh, it's really thrilling. Um, so if you say, hey, we can make some money, the chances are I probably want to look at it and figure out if it makes sense for me to participate and so, like, I mean, I think everybody saw these guys making tons of money in cryptocurrency. And so I'm throwing money everywhere and hoping and have no idea. Um, in fact, I looked uh, I looked at one of my wallets. I still hold a little bit of time Wonderland. And I'm looking at that thing at the time. It's like the freaking top, right? I But I don't know that at the time. Yeah. And I have like 50 grand in my bank account. I'm like, gosh, if I put all of this in, and it ran for just 30 more days, like that'd be like 200K. <laughs> and that would be like, I could do so much with that 200K. And thank yes. God Reason stepped in. I think I put like a thousand bucks in was all. And then like four days later, it rolled over. And I was like, oh, thank God for that. <laughs> um, but yeah. I the, mean, the Ponzi yield math we start doing when we see the high APR. I was like, whoa, if I could just, right. if this just keeps going for four days, I'm set, baby. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> So no, it's funny. I uh, I found Richard, one of my real estate buddies. I was at uh, I was at the title company closing a deal, and he was there as well. He got into hex at like a penny, um, and he let me know about it at like forty cents. <laughs> so you know, like I'm like, you did what uh, on your money? And he's telling me, you know, he has all this money now. And I'm like, oh geez, if I could just get like a double. So right, like I jump into YouTube, Wells Only and Cream, or like oh, it doubles every forty five days or whatever. And I'm like, well. That's not hard. I can wait 45 you know, days. I can wait yeah. for 45 days. Yeah, go. 45 days for a double. Like, <laughs> get me in. Let's do it. So, you know, like, so I, I pretty much was the top. Anyone that exited, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> you know, I put in like 100 grand at 42 cents. And, uh, you know, I'm just drinking all the Kool Aid. I have no idea what I'm doing at the time. And then, and then, you know, like you lose money and you lose value. And, and you say, gosh, you, at least in my opinion, you saw the run before. I uh, just didn't play the game right this last time around. And so how can you learn to play the game so you can be the one that benefits from next time around? And so mm-hmm. that's, uh, you know, so that's how, yeah, that's how I've treated it. And that's what we've tried to do to position ourselves for this next run. I hear you, man. I, I have a similar story, except I was the one who got in around like two two 2.7 cents. I, I looked actually again. I was like, what was my first buy? I know it was about three cents. I looked yesterday. Oh, nice. I was like, oh 2.7. That's pretty nice. That was, that was a good buy. You know, like on deck screen or how you can see like what you buy like like all your buys now when you click the filter button i was like let me look at like what my wallet looks it's just buying all the way up and then like one more buy at, like the 20 cents uh bull trap and then it was just like done <laughs> i was like yeah <laughs> just bought the whole way up <laughs> thought it was gonna go back and then i just lost it's kind of funny to watch it was nostalgic but then i talked to like friends and stuff about it around 20 cents which was not bad like they still got a double from there but with anything it takes there's a lag between when you tell them about it and when they're like, okay, bring me in. So by right. the time most of the people got in, it was like 40 cents. So I was like getting every, uh, getting everybody to buy the top. I was like, yeah, I think we can squeeze up to a dollar. It should be all right. And you can be able to exit. It'd be cool. And uh, that was not what happened at all. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> so you live and you learn, you know, it's all right. Yeah. That's all right. You know, we're, we're here now and now we've gotten some good price pumps after a very long uh, downtrend to be able to buy. And I remember back during the V3 pump, the, the test that V3 pump, you actually were able to a- exit in profit. At least you had the opportunity to after DCAing the, the whole way down. I bet that felt good. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I didn't exit anything. I was just, yeah. <laughs> you know, I was drinking the Kool-Aid and, and that's where, you know, I, I think there's a lot to be said. So many people round trip their bags this last time around. In fact, one of the guys that, uh, that we've grown a good relationship with, he reached out and this was such interesting advice. He said, Dane, um, the real money and everybody knows this, right. But I think a lot of people, a lot of people chase the, the yield. He said, Dane, I bet that if you, the real money's made from the multiples and appreciation. I bet that if you went back and you looked at your decision-making, I bet that most of the bad decisions you made were to chase passive income. And, uh, and so I, I, t- I took an afternoon and I was like, Oh, I wonder, uh, I wonder if that's accurate. And sure enough, like just about every single bad decision I can look back at was because I thought that I like I could make a bunch of of passive income relatively quickly. And I should have just been, you know, a little bit more patient uh, with my with my holdings. And mm-hmm. so, you know, that's been a, a really good example. And in fact, there was a coin fashions account where the guy said he round trip like it was I think it was almost three million bucks. And he said, mm-hmm. why, why do you ask I round trip this? He said he was making like 50 30 grand a day. A day. Yeah, or, like or was it 30? Something yeah, like, like that. It was, it was a solid five. It was a lot. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and when money's throwing off like that, like you feel like you could do no wrong. I had another cryptocurrency protocol I was in. I put a hundred grand in and that bad boy was throwing off 50 rats a month. It was wild. Um, and that one, I was like, I've taken all the profits. I was like, no, we're not letting any of this ride. So I made a bunch of money on that one, which is cool. Uh, but man, like, yeah. And so I think there's a lot to be said about just being, just understanding that about yourself. I love passive income. And I know that, you know, for me, I'm not willing to round trip anything back again. I don't need to sell any tops. Perfect. You know, but uh, if I can make a, make a considerable or a relatively conservative in crypto terms, we built our bags where I can get a 20 to 30 X on my holdings, you know, like that's relatively conservative in crypto terms. Like I meet my goals. And so, yeah. um, so yeah, so we'll see. Yeah. That, that, that tension between, you know, the, the X's being the main money maker and the fact that it's so easy to make passive income in crypto, like that, it's very, very hard to like kind of find the right balance. Cause I don't think you should give up the passive income necessarily because it's, it, it, it is probably the most passive kind of income you can make. Like you literally throw something in an LP pool or like a staking pool and then the money just accumulates. You have to click a couple buttons every once in a while. And then the money can go to your bank account versus like real estate. Like, like to, for the income, like I don't think like Corey says it's not passive at all. You know, it's like, yeah, you have cash flow that you have cash flow in real estate, but it's not passive. Like there's a lot of work to do with it. Um, right. with, but with crypto, like, especially when we get things like Tetra, like it's going to be the, the passivity of it is going to be so great. And so I've been reckless reconciling that stuff in my head. And I think, I think where I've landed is that you need to play at least one cycle correctly in terms of selling somewhere near the top and then buying somewhere near the bottom. And then you basically just get a whole cycle or at least the uptick of the bull run to just yield that whole way through, right? So like say, let's let's take that three mil guy who was making 50 grand a, a day. Say he took profits on, um, I don't know, let's do a mil and a half. Took the other mil and a half, making 15 grand a day. That's still good income. Took that mil and a half at the bottom, rebought back in. He could probably get back 10 to 20 grand of daily income now. But now that it's at the bottom, he doesn't have that downside risk anymore. And then as the market is going up, that 10 to 20 grand is turning into 50, 100, maybe even like 150 grand every single day because he's getting the inflated value of of the of the bull market coming with it. And I think right. I think that's where the the, the happy medium between you, you just have to know where your bag is at and where your risk level is at in terms of like where your entry price is relative to where the price is now, right? Like if you bought a hundred dollar Bitcoin and it's at 30 grand now, well, do you care if it goes to 20 grand or do you care if it goes to 40 grand? Uh, and like, yes, because you're that, that's a lot of value on paper that you're losing or making. But in terms of your entry position, it's really not that significant. You're still just crazy up. And so I think that's the kind of person who can start to use their bag more for the yielding side and the passive income income side of crypto versus necessarily taking profits at the top and then selling at the bottom. Although I'm sure that they would still need to do that, um, at least with a portion of their bag. Right. And time and timing is everything, you know, just like, yeah, I think you nailed it. I'm with you. Yeah. Well, well I've got to jump off here in 10 minutes. Should I give you guys? Yeah, I was about to say, on, uh, yeah, I was about to say, I think. 
I, I was just about to get to there. I was like, we got 10 more minutes with Dane. Let's get that free real estate alpha. All right. Let's hear let's it. Do it. So there's a few different ways to get free real estate. Um, full disclosure, the best deals tend to have like the most amount of work. So, uh, so I'll give you a good example. I have a deal right now where I bought, uh, essentially it's like two townhomes that are next to each other. I bought, I bought them for uh 400 K, uh, was this three or four years ago? Um, we had to fix them up. So I put, I put in, you know, like a, uh, what am I about a hundred ish? Yeah. I'm right about a hundred in. We've got some cash flow, um, from renting them. And, uh, and now I want to exit because, you know, I want to put more money into crypto. And so I sold off one of the units for, uh, for 500 K. So I paid off the mortgage. Uh, I got my money back on the rehab and my other unit is free. It's a free unit. I literally picked up some free real estate and you can do that and you can scale that any way that you want. So that's a really cool strategy. If you want to do bigger deals too, for investments or, or for investments, for, uh, for multifamily. So for instance, mm -hmm. if you want to do that at, at larger scale, well, there's a lot of multifamily deals where you can go and buy, uh, you know, a hundred unit apartment complex. And that a lot of the time these apartment complexes, now not all the time, you got to find the right deal. But a lot of the time these are built with the intention that there will be additional phases built as part of that community. And, uh, and people, you know, like it's a lot of work to build something like that. And so a lot of the time they don't, they don't actually finish the phases out. And so a lot of the time, what you can do is you can actually buy that and you have a couple of options. You can either buy that, you can go and you can go to the city and go through the process of actually like cutting a chunk of land off of that parcel that, uh, that you keep separate. And then you can go and exit and sell the building that you bought. Now you got a free piece of land to build on, which is a cool option. Mm -hmm. um, or you can do that with, uh, with houses, for instance, um, where, you know, I've got a number of, this isn't necessarily my cup of tea because once again, like the juice is, it's gotta be worth the squeeze. I don't like building new. Um, it's just a lot of work. Um, but I've got a number of friends here, for instance, in Utah in the greater Salt Lake area. If you go to some of the nicer neighborhoods that are older, there's large, their houses are built on large lots. Um, some of these lots, at least in our area, big for, for our areas, you know, like uh, like a half an acre. Some of these are an acre size lots. And you can go do a flag lot, which is essentially you're, you're peeling off. Usually it's in the back. So if the house is here, here's the road. It's facing the road. It's facing this way. We can go and you can subdivide the backyard or portion of it off and have a driveway down the side like this. And uh, and taking that, that land off the back doesn't really doesn't really decrease the value of the property a lot in most mm -hmm. circumstances. And so you can go in and once again, this is all city work. You go, you got to make sure you're in the right zoning and you got to make sure that they'll approve it. But you can go and uh, and subdivide a portion, create a flag lot off the back. Uh, once again, it doesn't really hurt your value. You can go sell the house and keep that lot for hmm. oftentimes for free, uh, which is pretty remarkable. So, uh, so there is an option there. And then one of the last ways, this isn't like free technically, but a way that you can get into a house with no money, uh, that I've done a number of times is called seller financing. And this is a beautiful thing, especially right now where a lot of people, you know, like I see them all over social media, TikTok. you know, millennials are talking about how life is so much worse than when our parents grew up. Um, I mean, look, you, you've just got to find that you've got to be more shrewd and better at finding opportunities if things are harder. That's just the game. Welcome to real life. Um, so one of the cool ways is you can go in. Interest rates, as everybody knows, have gone up for houses. Um, there are a lot of people that have locked in way better rates than are available today. Mm -hmm. And so what you can do is you can go find somebody. And for instance, uh, you know, like Sloth, if you had a house, say you locked in like rates today are like 8%. You know, seven or eight percent mm -hmm. if you went and got went and got a traditional mortgage. There's a lot of people that have mortgages at two, three, four, five percent. Um, and if I came to you and you were one of those people and I said, Hey, you know, um, you've got this house, would you consider selling it? Um, usually my usually the way something like that would go for me is I say, Look, like this house you've got, I'm looking for something to buy. Um, it's in the right area. Tell me about the condition. We go through all that, and I say, Look. Um, I, I'd be willing to pay you a premium if you'd be flexible on how you're paid for this property. 
and uh, it's not for everybody. But you know, if it is, if it is right, you'll make more money on this house selling it to me than you're going to make selling it to anyone else. And I'll, and I'm mm -hmm. happy to show you how. And uh, and this is a this is a really good opportunity for people that are uh, often a little bit older, retirees. We've done this with a lot of people like that. Um, where, you know, they don't necessarily need the money today. A lot of the time people mm -hmm. want, but they want a stream of passive income. Um, mm -hmm. And they want to do it in a way that's more tax advantage. So you can go, you can take over somebody's uh, somebody's note, their mortgage, if you will. Now there's a right way to do it. Uh, Crypto Ethos makes a great point. You have to be careful. The assumable loan clause. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good point. If you want more information on this, feel free to reach out to me. I can give you the ins and outs. I've done tons of deals like this. Um, the assumable loan clause is, in my experience, not something to get worried about in any way, shape, or form. It's just a matter of structuring the deal properly. Uh, but essentially, what you can do is you can, uh, Corey, he's giving away all our secrets. You can go in uh, and step into a deal where uh, where you buy a property, and uh, and if you negotiate it in such a way, a lot of the time people they don't need money right now. Rather, they they like to prevent taxes. And they'd like a passive stream of income. If you're going to rent it out, well, that's something that you could probably provide to them. And so, um, so that's been a really cool way to purchase properties. I purchased, like I said, a bunch that way. In fact, you could even contract properties like that and sell them to another investor, which I've done as well. There's a lot of ways to make money in, in real estate. And like I said, the best deals tend to be uh, from the things that you have to put in a lot of work. And so it depends on you, what your goals are, what, how much money you have at the time. Um, all that type of stuff. You need either need time or money to make uh, make money in anything. It's preferable to have both. And uh, and I prefer at this point to go and uh, and do bigger deals where we make money um, a lot more passive than having to do all that heavy lifting. So up to you and what you want to accomplish. That was awesome. Was it? It says seller seller financing. That was the last one that you talked about. Yep, it's called seller financing. There's so much content out there. You can go on YouTube. And learn all you could ever want on seller financing. Um, it, there's some complexities there. It's not mm -hmm. like an average. It, it's certainly not an average deal. It's a more complex way to go and purchase real estate. But once you can figure that out, like those are the keys to the kingdom. And here's another cool thing. You go do that with a business. So there are more boomers trying to retire right now than there ever has been in, in all of, or at least during the boomer period. There's more boomers trying to retire right now than there ever has been amongst boomers. And many of them are entrepreneurs. Now, do you think that it's more, is there more competition to buy houses? Are there more people in the market looking to buy a house? Or are there more people in the market looking to buy a business? There's a lot more people looking to buy houses. And so the business buying sector is one that is, is ripe with opportunity. It's less competitive than buying houses. And seller financing is a lot more um, commonplace because you can't, you know, for many businesses, you can't just go get a business loan to buy anything. And so you can step in, you can say, hey, Mr. and Ms. Seller, um, let's figure out some terms by which, mm -hmm. you know, they act as the bank for a period of time. They show you the ropes on how to operate it. And they have an opportunity to get out of that business and go and retire like they want, uh, while also maybe keeping some of their cash flow or like, leaving a legacy a lot of a lot of older people they want to pass down their knowledge they want to give back and they'll mm -hmm. give it to somebody that's hungry and uh and can show you know that they have the the stones to go and, and work and so there's so many really cool applications for those principles if you're willing to dive in and, and learn them yeah and i think crypto ethos brings up a great point to end this on timing can be amazing with crypto and all this opportunity so i think you and day you and uh corey are setting yourselves up really well to you know, get some authority in the in the in the crypto community, crypto space overall, and then you just have the perfect knowledge set and skill set for when everything is in the right place at the right time with the bull market to be able to translate that over. Like you guys say, uh, wealth generation with crypto, wealth preservation with real estate. Absolutely. So if you guys want to, um, in time, like Sloth said, we're we've got all the infrastructure. We've got over a hundred people in our group, some of the highest level real estate investors in the uh, in the country in the United States. Uh, that we're going to be investing with. And uh, if you want help parking money in real estate so that you can offset your, your crypto gains and taxes, I haven't paid, I haven't had a taxable burden in years because I, I'm, I qualify through real estate to not pay any taxes. You can do that too. If you just have the right plan and know how to execute and work within the, the rules and parameters of the IRS. 
And so if that's something that you're interested in, feel free to, uh, yeah, feel free to DM me. Happy to uh, talk to you about that. Right now, we're very focused on crypto. You guys probably don't need help in crypto, which is fine. But when the time comes, you need help in real estate. Um, we're going to shine. There's nobody that's bringing these two asset classes together like we are. And uh, it'll be an opportunity to be able to uh, to largely invest passively in real estate and get a lot of the uh, the benefits that everyone hopes to get from that tax incentives and passive income. So we are the guys for that. Hell yeah. All right, Dave, where can we find you guys? T tell us where they can, everybody can find you. Yeah, Twitter is the best. So you can come and find me. It's just at money talk underscore Dane. If you want to come and find me, um, I'm on Twitter. Feel free to DM me. Um, I'm pretty active there. You can typically, um, you can, yeah, you can typically get get a hold of me there. So feel, feel free to send me a DM. Love to connect. Anything we can do to help, uh, that's, what we're, that's what we're here for. Yep. I put all of his links, Twitter, the YouTube channel. Check out that. Check out all of that stuff in the description below. Uh, for me, obviously, you guys know where to find me. You're on my channel right now. Hit the like, subscribe, all of that. And hey, if you want to book a 15-minute free call with me, my calendar is down below. If there's a slot available. That could be yours. All right, Dane, buddy, I had a great time. I think this was a great chat. Thank you for sharing all of your knowledge. Thank you for hanging out with me for an hour. I really appreciate your time, man. Yep, appreciate it, man. I'll talk to you later. Yep. All right, everybody. Peace out.